Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Devos at Home. My name is Matthew. I am the worship leader for Hope Point Church. And today we're going to continue our study of Psalms 91 that we've been putting out every morning with different leaders and pastors within our church. And today we're going to continue by covering verses 11, 12, and 13. And we're going to use the SOAP method, which is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So if you would get your Bible out or your mobile device and take a look at Psalms 91 verse 11 through 13, I'll be reading out of the new King James version. It says, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. So one thing that, that I notice when I read those three verses is that they're all promises of God. And in fact, all of Psalms 91 is promises of God. Every single verse is a separate promise that we can stand on and believe in today uh, for us as believers in Jesus Christ. And when I look at verse 11, um, there's a couple words that jump out of, at me. The first one is charge. It says, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in a way that kind of sounds like he is giving his angels some sort of ownership or um, control over us. And it's kind of a, a weird Inter or that's a weird uh, interpretation that you could have and it's kind of strange and it's not really what he's meaning but instead that word charge means that they will be sent with you so his angels are sent with us um, that's the promise in this first half of this verse the second one is keep it says the angels will keep you in all of your ways and again that kind of makes it seem like we're being contained somehow but what the psalmist and what God is really trying to convey is that we will be kept. There will be a hedge around us or a hedge of protection. And that's something that we see elsewhere in scripture, like in uh, Job 1 verse 10, where Satan is going to be tempting Job um, and is testing him and testing God's followers. But he says, well, if I'm testing Job, didn't you place a hedge around him, a hedge of protection? And so he identifies that hedge as this same hedge that's laid out in Psalms 91, because which is important for us because it means that it's something that he recognizes that God is protecting us and we are off limits. And so in Job, there's very specific um, reasons that he is allowed to tempt Job and go after him. But in Psalms 91, it's a promise to us that uh, God is placing his angels uh, with us and they are putting their keep around us. They're putting their hedge of protection around us so that we are off limits to the enemy. In verse 12, it says, in their hands, they shall bear you up. Okay, this isn't really meaning like physical hands. It's not gonna cause you to levitate or lift you off the ground um, but hands is really referring to their power and it's kind of like in church or when we're praying for somebody when we lay hands on them we are transferring the power of the holy spirit that lives within us into the person that we are praying for whether that be uh, healing or encouragement the power that we have is symbolically transferred through our hands. And so in this scripture, it's saying that the angels will use their power that they have been given from God to make sure that we, um, we don't strike our foot on any stone. So that's the second part of verse 12, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so what it's saying is that the things that are beneath us that we shouldn't be getting tripped up on, um, we are actually being empowered to avoid those uh, in our life. Now, verse 13 is uh, a little bit more of an oddball. It's kind of an aggressive verse. It says, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, 
the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So we're still talking about walking. Um, and specifically, this one says that we shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. Well, the word tread is different in the first half of the verse than in the second half when it says trample. And so I looked it up because I'm a nerd and it's referring to walking and navigating. So it's looking at going from point A to point B over a period of time. And so what it's saying in Psalms 13 is that you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. So the lion, first Peter five, seven says that our adversary. So the devil, Satan is roaming around us like a roaring lion. And so it's saying that we will be able to tread. We'll be able to navigate him. And if we combine that with the second half of verse 12, where we won't, uh, we won't hit our foot on a stone, then it's meaning that uh, we can navigate the, the evil ways of the world and these temptations in a way that uh, we do not succumb to them. And I think that's an important distinction to make is that we don't have to succumb because we not only are we empowered by Jesus Christ um, and we are under the protection and the charge of his angels, um, but we also are thinking changes as we become children of Christ and as we learn to walk in his ways that we don't have to say yes to every temptation and we don't have to say uh, we can say no to the right things we can say yes to the right things it's um, it's a wisdom and a lamp unto us that guides us and helps us navigate or tread throughout the lion and the cobra in this text the second part of 13, I think is a little bit more literal, at least the way that the Bible often portrays the lion and the serpent saying, you will trample them over foot. It's giving us dominion over, uh, animal kind and creatures, which often are symbolizing evil and the devil, just like in the garden of Eden. And like I mentioned in first Peter, uh, five, seven, we're given dominion. We're given power that um, we are above them, that we are preferred by Jesus over them. And through our covenant with him, uh, we can overcome the world and overcome the devil. And um, we, we do not have to fall into the traps or be afflicted in the way that the devil is trying to attack us. So how do we apply these promises that are laid out in Psalms 11 through 13 to our life? Well, I think it's important that when we read Psalms 91 or any of the Psalms and well, the entire Old Testament for that matter, through the lens of the New Testament and the new covenant that we have in Jesus, that if we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit will come into us and dwell within us and empower us. And when we look at Psalms 91, there's multiple times where it mentions that he who abides in the secret place, verse one and verse nine, both say this, that he who abides in the secret place will have access to all these promises that get laid out in the chapter. And I think it's important to remember that now that we're on this side of Jesus, that, uh, we can abide in the secret place through, uh, Ephesians two, four, which says that uh, he has raised us up. He has made us sit in heavenly places with him. Uh, and John 4, 15 says, he who confesses Jesus as son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So once we acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is savior, savior, and we have accepted him and received him into our hearts, now we abide in God and God abides in us. So we are abiding, we are living and dwelling in that secret place that unlocks all of these promises to us. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing concept. And when we read the Psalms, like Psalms 91 and all the other promises in the Old Testament, uh, it's important to recognize that uh, these are, are for us. We're not trying to fulfill a piece of the law like many of the Old Testament um, Bible characters were. We are covered by the blood of Jesus and we can live in that freedom and under these promises every single day. 
Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Uh, before we go, the last letter in SOAP is a P, which stands for prayer. So I'd like to pray with you this morning as we close out this devotional. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the time I've been able to spend with you and what you've instilled in my heart through this study of Psalms 91. I pray that you go with every single viewer and everybody that calls Hope Point Church their home, uh, or if they've just been blessed by this online ministry that we've been putting together in these times of quarantine. I thank you so much for the promises in verses 11, 12, 13, that you will protect us and that we're empowered to overcome the, the works and the traps and tricks that the devil tries to play on us. And so I pray for everybody this morning that as they continue their day and finish out their week, that they feel empowered to trample the works of the enemy and rise above the wor worldly elements that are beneath them as followers of Christ who has received you in, uh, in their hearts. So I just thank you for everything that you have done for us and continue to do for us and pray that we all um, glorify you and worship you in all of the small decisions and small actions that we take today and for the rest of the week. In your holy name we pray, amen.